Coming up on Locked On Dodgers, the Dodgers made a huge trade for a right fielder to replace Mookie Betts while he's hurt. Well, a trade anyway. Uh, we're going to talk about that, and we're going to answer your questions about Justin Turner's future, some trade deadline stuff, and a bunch of other things. So let's get Locked On Dodgers. You are Locked On Dodgers, your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Dodger fans. This is Locked On Dodgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every weekday morning. Remember, this show is free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked On Dodgers. Or even better, go ahead and, sub- go ahead and subscribe wherever you're watching or listening, and that way you'll never miss a day because you know we're not going to. If this is your first time watching or listening, my name is Jeff Snyder. That is my co-host, Vince Samperio. Uh, Vince and I are both lifelong Dodger fans, just like you are. We've also both spent time covering the Dodgers in the press box of the locker room. So we're not quite insiders, but we bring you the smart fans perspective on our boys in blue every weekday morning. Today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. Uh, amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com and tell them Locked On sent you. Uh, yeah, so Vince, uh, the big news in Dodger land, we had an off day on Monday and the big news was the Dodgers traded for an old friend, uh, seemed to happen pretty quickly. We got word that there were in discussions to acquire Trace Thompson from the Tigers. And then pretty quickly, it was a done deal. They got him for cash, which, uh, goes down as a trade seems more like a purchase to me, but, uh, you know. I, I just have an English degree, so I, I don't know much about words. But uh, either way, Trace Thompson, who played with the Dodgers in, I think, 2016 and 17, uh, something like that, he is back with the Dodgers. He is a right-handed hitting outfielder, and uh, apparently that was what they were looking for. Yesterday we talked about possible internal options to fill the void uh, caused by Mookie's injury. I still don't know for sure that this is the move. You know, they could still go with some of those other routes that we talked about yesterday, but it's definitely uh, – we, we knew it was a possibility that they go outside the organization. Yeah, it's not the move, and I think just based on how it is, even if they have the splits against left-handers, if Martin or Lamb were right-handed, they would have been the move to be called up. The fact that they weren't kind of changed it. The day started with the Rosenthal rumor that the Dodgers – we're looking for right-handed hitting help, uh, and then a, a little another nugget that they could call up Miguel Vargas at some point as well. Uh, and then by the end of the day, Trace Thompson's on the Dodgers. Interesting career for Trey for Trace Thompson. I mean, he had a big month or two with the Dodgers back in 2016. I mean, he had 13 home runs that year. Uh, Ended up with a 7.38 OPS, but you know did finish with OPS plus under 100. So by the end of it, was a below average league hitter. But uh, if he can just bottle up that two weeks uh, for like the f- couple weeks or a few weeks that he had it in 2016, that'd be good. And he's had an interesting career since then. He played in 2018, didn't play in 2019 or 2020 in the majors. Played a handful of games in 2021. Played a few games at the beginning of the season. This season with the Padres. Um, but definitely seems to be a guy that loves baseball at the very least and a guy that loves baseball that hits right-handed and that can play outfield. I guess that's exactly what the bare minimum we could ask for at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously he's a great athlete comes from a a family of great athletes. His dad and his brother, both NBA stars. Uh, And yeah, you know, it's, it's a basically a zero risk acquisition. It's just money, which the Dodgers have plenty of. uh, And so, there's no reason not to go this route. It's it's a roster spot. I mean, there's no such thing as no risk when you are giving an act, and, and we don't even know for sure that they are giving a spot on the active roster to Trace Thompson immediately. Uh, we haven't heard that. They will have to make room on the 40-man roster for him. If they do that, uh, as we talked about yesterday, they could put Walker Bueller on the 60-day IL. They could uh, send David Price packing some one way or the other, a few options to open up a spot on the 40-man roster, which they would need to do for him. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll probably learn more on Tuesday because the Dodgers, you know, the, the other bit of roster news that we 
saw or heard uh, rumors of is that apparently maybe Caleb Ferguson's on the injured list. They didn't announce that, but it's on their transactions page. You know, every once in a while that transaction page has something that's mistaken, but but usually that is pretty accurate. And so maybe that is their move because we know that by that they need to drop a pitcher and add a position player to their active roster. And so, you know, maybe it's as simple as Ferguson to the IL, Bueller to the 60 day IL and Trace Thompson on the roster. And maybe that's all the moves for for that that are coming right now. Yeah, that's the easiest path, and you know that remains to be seen. But I don't, I don't know. I can't see them getting trace for my minor league depth. I don't see them. You know, they have enough guys down there anyway. So. Yeah, they definitely plan on him in the big leagues. It's just a matter of if that's immediate or not. And you know, with what we talked about yesterday about how most of their actual immediate options aren't on the forty man roster, it does make sense to just do him now, since the the other alternative would be adding somebody else to the forty man roster. Uh, in addition to him. So, yeah, probably Trace Thompson on the active roster by the time they play in Cincinnati today. Hasn't hit well in the majors since that hot stretch with the Dodgers, but does have 17 home runs in AAA this year, So, which is more than Lamb and Martin had, although their OPSs are all around the same anyway. So. Yeah, so, you know, everything that we said about Lamb and Martin, the case we made for them, uh, kind of equally applies to Trace Thompson, except he's probably – a better outfielder. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know what Jason Martin's like defensively, but uh, he's at least an outfielder. So that's a benefit over the Jake Lamb thing because Jake Lamb would have ne- required a bunch of moving parts to, to make that one work. And we'll probably answer or talk some about those moving parts because we've got some questions in our mailbag about not specifically that, but some guys who would have been involved in those moving parts anyway. So uh, I think we should just jump into the mailbag, right? Get in it. All right, let's uh let's start with uh you know what let's start with one from Kevin at Blue Goon 82. He's asking about Justin Turner. He says JT started ice cold, then heated up a tiny bit, and now is back to being ice cold. There's very little talk about replacing him. Father time is undefeated. Is it time to put JT on the bench and promote Vargas, Bush, or Amaya? And uh I'll start by saying maybe Kevin and I uh don't see the same people on social media because I've seen a lot of talk of replacing Justin Turner. Yeah. I think maybe he just means on the Dodger side, but it, I, yes and no. I mean, is it time to start considering other options? Yes. Uh, in terms of consideration, is it time to actually put them into place? They're going to give them a longer lease. So even if I believed it was time right now to take them out of the everyday lineup, it's not going to happen, so there's no point in me, in me arguing for that point. Uh, do I think that it could happen by the end of the year? I, I do think that's possible. I do think the fact that Miguel Vargas has already been mentioned by someone like Rosenthal uh, is you know, pointing to the fact that somebody in the organization has knowledge that they have considered talking about bringing up Miguel Vargas. You know, He's a guy that if he came in and had a hot streak and Justin Turner sees himself – sees his playing time dwindle, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see it now. I wouldn't be surprised to see it in like two months. Yeah, and you remember last year, Vince, a conversation we had about Kenley Jansen, and basically we said, if he's not the closer, he doesn't actually have a spot on the team, you know, because if Kenley wasn't good enough to close, he wasn't good enough to pitch a middle relief either, and so basically it was closer or off the team. I feel like the same is true for JT right now. If he's not good enough to be a starter, he's not good enough to be on the team. And, and I think that's part of the reason, you know, it's not as easy as just benching him because there's not a bench spot. You don't have room on the bench for a guy who can't hit uh, any more than you have a room in the starting lineup for one. And so it's, uh, I I think they are going to give Justin Turner time. It's hard to tell for sure. And this is why, like, I remember when the whole Bryce Harper thing came out, one of the points I made was if you have a superstar who signed long-term and say Bryce Harper, you know, he's signed with the Phillies for 13 years. And what if, if in year seven, he's hitting like JT's hitting right now? And it's like, okay, we've got to get this guy for six more years. We have to give him a leash, you know? And, and it's kind of the same boat for the Dodgers, except the reason they have to give JT a leash is because of his status with the Dodgers. But it seems to me like as soon as they make the determination that he's not good enough to start anymore, then the answer is, uh, okay, JT, why don't you go spend some time on the IL? Like, and by some time, we mean for the rest of the year. You're now a player coach who's not on the active roster, and uh, 
let, let's call it a hamstring, shall we? And, uh, and then, you know, I think that's the answer. If JT gets bumped out of the starting position, it, he gets bumped off the active roster and they figure out a way to uh, do that while saving face IL wise or whatever. Yeah. Basically a nicer version of what happened with Adrian Gonzalez. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Basically. Okay. Uh, all right. We got a lot more questions to get to, but uh, we're going to do some ads first. So thank you for making locked on Dodger first listen and please keep it locked on Dodgers. This episode is brought to you by rock auto. I've told you all about rock auto Plenty of times, I'm going to tell you again, if you ever need auto parts and you're not buying them at rockauto.com, you're doing it wrong. Uh, There's not many things in life that are clear cut black and white, but you will spend less at rockauto.com than you would at the auto parts store. And you won't have to get in your car and drive to the auto parts store and go inside a gross auto parts store. You just go to your computer or your phone, go to rockauto.com, find your make and model of of car or truck, and it'll list all the parts available. You'll find what you need. You'll order it. I've saved $1,000 on struts for my Suburban. I spent $8.16 on a new interior door handle for a Ford Fusion instead of $49.99 at the auto parts store. Everything you need is going to be cheaper. I don't know if it'll save you a thousand bucks. I don't know if it'll be 80% cheaper like it was for me, but you're going to save 20, 30% every single time. So if you ever need auto parts, go to rockauto.com. Go there right now just to see what I'm talking about. You can enter your uh, car or truck. It'll show you all the parts available. And then when you do buy something, write locked on in there, how did you hear about us box? So they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. Hey, one live NBA draft show is not enough for locked on. The entire NBA channel is going live on NBA draft night. So if you have a favorite NBA team, probably the Lakers, maybe the Clippers, maybe somebody else, whoever it is, make sure you subscribe to to their Locked On YouTube channel so you get notified when they go live on NBA Draft Night. And now let's talk more about baseball. Uh, Vince, you want to read a question? Yeah, so a couple questions with similar similar ties to it. One from B. Holmes at B. Holmes says, one from at Champ City LA says, looking at it now, it's something you'd have changed from this last offseason. And then Champ City LA's question, or one of his questions is, on a scale of one to Pedro Martinez, how much do we regret tra- trading AJ Pollock for Craig Kimball? If our scale is is one to Pedro, uh, I'd put that one on a, I don't know, maybe a two. I don't know. I AJ that Pollock's was, not. That was my number. Yeah, AJ Pollock's not lighting the world on fire, even with with Mookie Betts's injury. Like, yeah, it would be nice right now to have AJ Pollock for the next two weeks, assuming Mookie's out for two weeks. Now, if Mookie's out for three months with this injury, maybe and Craig Kimbrell continues to suck, then then maybe. But as of right now, I assume Kimbrell's going to get better because his stuff's still good, and I assume Mookie's going to be back in a couple weeks. And I think I don't think AJ Pollock, when Mookie's healthy, I don't think he is one of the Dodgers' three best outfielders. Uh, probably not one of their four best outfielders. And so, you know, I, I think uh, I think they made the right call trading Pollock. So the only reason it's not a one is because right at this very moment, they could use they could use Pollock to fill this outfield gap. Uh, but they got Trey, Th- Trey Thompson, you know? Uh, and as for what they might have uh, done differently in the offseason, I don't know. You, you can always play that guessing game, at, but you know, even, I don't know, like, it's not like there's any one player who is available that they didn't go after who would be making all the difference right now. I mean, really, it's just a matter of, I mean, they got Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman was the best free agent on the market. Uh, you know, they could have got Carlos Correa, but shortstop hasn't been a problem for them. Um, you know, they, there's there's things they could have done, but they went and got Freddie Freeman, and Freeman hasn't really taken off yet. And uh, and they're still on pace to win 100 games. You know, they are underperforming and they're on pace to win 100 games. So uh, I assume that, you know, even if Tyler Anderson and Tony Gonsolin regress a little bit negatively, you have to assume that uh, regression to the mean also includes Freddie Freeman getting a little bit better and Will Smith getting a little bit better. And, you know, a lot of these things, Max Muncy getting better. All, uh, so I think there's plenty of room I'll be really, really surprised if this team doesn't win 100 plus games. And yeah, maybe it's not the 120 that we thought they might challenge for coming into the season, but that maybe wasn't realistic anyway. 
And so uh, I, I don't know if there's anything I, I really think they should have done differently. Yeah, I mean, when you look at it, the names you th- or the names I think of at least are all starting pitchers that they could have gone after, but they're not necessarily hurting for starting pitch. I mean, even with Bueller out, you know, that they wouldn't have technically had room or we might not have seen Gonson and Anderson flourish like they have been. You know, you think of Carlos Rodon or even Gausman, who both their deals weren't that expensive considering, weren't that long considering, but – yeah, I mean, there. I don't. I can't think of any reliever. I can't think. Of, I mean, even Jansen, notwithstanding, with the Kimbrels, you know, not being good. I can't think of any reliever. I can't think of any other position player that they could have signed or, or any deal. You know, trade for Matt Chapman. I guess if you knew that Justin Turner was not going to be as good, I guess that would be the only other one. But uh, yeah, I don't have any concerns about what they did in the off season. Um, and that counts the AJ Pollock, Craig Kimbrell trade. Even if AJ Pollock was on pace to be an all-star just based on what they need at the time and what the roles were and everything else. I wouldn't have regrets of that trade. Now, eventually, yeah, if Kim ends up being this bad the whole year, you'll have regret of just like, well, that kind of sucked. Not necessarily regret for the actual trade. Yeah. Yeah. And, and maybe you and I are both just too practical to, to answer this question in a way that will satisfy people because yeah, I mean, yeah, at the end of the season, we'll be able to look back. Oh, Justin Turner was this good? Matt Chapman was this good? Okay, they should have traded for Chapman instead or, you know, whatever. But but realistically, right at this point, eh, I, I don't know if there's anything major that I would change. Um, all right, next question. Uh, this is an interesting one. Right-handed power at right-handed PWR on Twitter. It says, who closes games in the playoffs for the Dodgers? Yeah, it's an interesting one. I say the Dodgers would hope that it's Craig Kimbrell, um, but I'll loop this in with a couple other questions that we had that we similar to ones we had last week uh, about Dustin May. And I'm all in on Dustin May being the guy to close out games in October, uh, assuming everything goes right and he comes back. And that's where it is. that's where I'm at right now. But in my mind, you know, I. I'm not counting on Blake Trining coming back just because, you know, arm injuries are always weird. I am counting on Dustin May to come back, and I'm saying that he's going to close out games in October. Yeah, and I'll tell you something that I really believe. We we touched on it on yesterday's episode. There's not the loyalty problem here that the Dodgers had with Kenley Jansen. So if Craig Kimbrell does not deserve to close games in October, he won't. Whether that means he doesn't even make the postseason roster because he's not good enough or whatever, He's not going, they're not going to bring him in like they did with Kenley sometimes. And even with Kenley, like, yeah, you know, he blew game four of the, of the 2020 world series. He had some, you know, some of his more notable failures in the postseason, like the ones in 2017, Kenley was the best reliever in baseball in 2017. You know, it wasn't silly at all to think that he was going to be good in the postseason. And so if anything in the postseason, Dave Roberts has struggled with trusting his bullpen enough. You know, the the issues have been, let's use Clayton Kershaw here instead of one of our eight rested relievers. Let's use Max Scherzer here and let's use Julio here instead of going with relievers. And so, you know, they're not going to throw Kimbrell out there if he doesn't deserve to be there. And they've got Daniel Hudson and hopefully Blake Trinan and Dustin May and, you know, whoever else, whichever, you know, Tony Gonsolin, if he's not in the in the postseason rotation, whoever it is. I mean, the Dodgers are going to have at least one good starter, one starter who's really good right now who won't be in their postseason rotation. And that's even if they don't trade for anybody. So those guys will be in the bullpen. So they're going to have plenty of options. And I really do believe that whoever it is, I I hope it's Kimbrell because that means that Kimbrell has bounced back and is dominant Kimbrell and you just bump everybody else up an inning. Dustin May and Blake Trinan and Daniel Hudson and, and Alex Vesia and all these other guys, Bruce R. Gratterall, all these guys can pitch in roles, pitch, you know, in matchups and everything and be a really, really dominant postseason bullpen. That's the, the version I'm hoping for. But I think the answer to the question who closes games in October is whoever deserves to. Sleeper, Walker Bueller. If he doesn't get back to start, he gets back late September or mid-September, won't have enough time to build ramp back up, Walker Bueller. 
Yeah, especially if he comes back, you know, he had that that surgical procedure to remove a, a bone chip from his elbow or whatever. I don't remember what the terminology was, but, you know, he said it's been bothering him for a couple of years. Maybe that's part of the velocity issue or something. If he comes back hitting 98 again, uh, you know, yeah. Walker Bueller closer in October, I, I'm all for it. Probably time to read another ad. That's probably true. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's talk about Built Bar. Built Bar, they, they make the best tasting protein bars in the world. Somehow they are delicious and healthy for you. And they have a new flavor. It's mud pie. Mud pie. Just, I mean, it, it's not made of actual mud. Although when I was a kid, that would have sounded really good. But uh, if you're a chocolate fan, mud pie is basically rich whipped cream and chocolate mousse smothered in 100% real chocolate and topped with cookies and cream crumble. They have this in both a built bar form and a built puff form. Oh, like it, it's ridiculous. If you like chocolate, you're going to love it. And just like every other thing that built makes, it's healthy. The mud pie, it's packed with 16 grams of protein, only 150 calories and eight grams of sugar. It's, it, it's ridiculously good and it's healthy for you. I, I, I'm saying that over and over because I still can't believe every time I eat a built bar, I'm like, I don't have to feel guilty about this because this is really good. So if you know what flavors you like, order those. If you don't, you can order a mix box. They'll send you a bunch of different flavors. If, you, if this mud pie, if I did my job and your mouth is watering right now, order those. But whatever you order, go to built.com and use promo code LOCK15 and you will get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, we want to thank you guys again for making Locked on Dodge your first lesson every day. We are back for one last segment. And uh, Vince, I think it's your turn to read a question, right? Yeah. Am I on mute? No, I'm not. All right, cool. Nope. Um, <clears throat> all right, uh, this is one that I know you have an answer for. We'll probably have similar answers. But at Chantapelian says, why does this team fail to meet expectations every year? All right, Chantapelian, there are two possible answers. Uh, I think the most likely answer is because your expectations aren't realistic. Uh, because if the Dodgers have uh, set their record for franchise, franchise record for most wins in a season twice in the last three years uh, or three full years, that's pretty awesome. They won the World Series two years ago. That was kind of awesome. Uh, I mean, Dave Roberts in his time as manager – he has the best winning percentage of any manager in history. The Dodgers during the regular season have absolutely met every expectation that anybody could have realistically had for them. Not on a day-to-day -day basis, slumps happen, but overall, it's uh, they've been awesome. Now, in the postseason, they haven't won the World Series every year. Uh, I, one year, notably, I don't know if you heard, the opposing team cheated to win. Uh, that kind of sucked. Uh, the next year, they lost the World Series to another team that cheated that year, but probably didn't cheat to win the World Series. The prob Dodgers probably just got outplayed. Uh, and then, yeah, 2019 was frustrating. I feel like that was that was a uh, human error that that cost the Dodgers that series against the Nationals. And the Nationals went on to win, win the World Series, so maybe they should have won that uh, last year. You know, yeah, I mean, they went to the NLCS and they lost in the NLCS to a team that probably wasn't as good as them. But the nature of the MLB postseason, basically, as the postseason expands more and more, it gets less and less about what team is the best. It used to be back when the American League, you know, there were no divisions. The Yankees would win the American League. The Dodgers or somebody else would win the National League. They'd play in the World Series, and the better team would usually win. And that's why the Yankees have so many World, si World, World Series titles, because they were usually the best team in baseball. But in my lifetime... I'm 45 years old. I would guess that maybe 15 or 20 times, not even 20, 15, 10 to 15 times, I would guess the best team in baseball has actually won the World Series. That's not the goal of the postseason. The goal of the postseason is a tournament to see who can play the best for a month and who gets hot at the right time. You know, we saw in 2014, the Giants didn't even win their division, but Madison Bumgarner got unbelievably hot for a few weeks and the Giants won the World Series. Uh, you had last year, it was freaking what's that guy's name on the Braves, Vince, who's really bad at baseball, and yet he was Babe Ruth last year. 
Eddie Rosario against the Eddie, Dodgers. Yeah, Eddie Rosario. Like, Eddie Rosario is the reason the Dodgers didn't win the World Series last year. That's not a sentence anybody should say, but that's what the postseason is about. It's about who gets hot at the right time. So, if your question is about the regular season, why do they not meet the expectations? That's a problem with your expectations. If it's about the postseason, it's because baseball is designed to not have the best team win every year, and, and that's okay. You know, uh, I get a lot of enjoyment from the six months of the regular season and I every once in a while get a lot of enjoyment from October. And a lot of times I get enjoyment, 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 and heartbreak. And even that that's part of being a baseball fan. And I'm OK with that. Yeah, as Dodger fans, I mean, I feel like our expectation is playoffs. Uh, obviously, you expect to win the World Series, but that's more of just like a, what else are you going to expect rather than what is actually going to happen? And for me, you get into the dance, you win the division, or you get in every time. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm, that's not an end-all, be-all, but they're not going to win it every year. And at the end of the day, 29 teams are usually short of whatever their expectations are, depending on uh, how low your expectations were of that team. So it's, that's just the way it goes. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if this question is present at the moment right now because they're struggling or just something he's been feeling for a while, but uh, – yeah. Could they have had a couple more World Series? Yes. But should they have at least one more? Yes. But, you know. Yeah. And, and recency bias does come into this a lot. I think when your team is struggling, it's easy to feel like they always struggle. They always underperform. And when the Dodgers go on a nine-game winning streak soon, we're going to feel like they're unbeatable and they're never going to lose again. You know, that's how baseball works. That's how being a fan works. And uh, – I don't hold that against anybody, but uh, I personally, for me, I try to keep that perspective and, and recognize that things are never as good or as bad as they seem at the time. So um, I think that's probably a, a good episode. You know, I think that pretty much covers unless you, uh, any pressing questions you saw that we really need to answer Vince. No, Brandon Johnson question is a good one, but that's a good one for like a whole segment in the near future, not for one question right now. Yeah, we'll tease that. Brandon asked about who will start the most games at shortstop next year for the Dodgers and threw out a couple names. So that is, you know, that that is uh, the Dodgers have another off day coming up soon, don't they? I, I think, oh, no, so. they, they I think they play 10 games in 10 days right now. But but yeah, you know, we'll we'll have plenty of time, whether it's the next off day episode or. Uh, if if events lead to a discussion of that, we'll talk about that soon, I'm sure, uh, because, yeah, it is interesting to think about the Dodgers future at shortstop because Trey Turner is in his last year under contract. Jacob Amaya is hitting really well in AAA. Gavin Lux is a shortstop by trade. So plenty of options and plenty to talk about there, but we will save that for another day. Uh, so, Vince, you have anything else before we wrap it up? No. Um, the other off days – after like playing 30 and one and 30 or whatever it was, and then having three off days in the span of like seven days, not a fan. Let's get back to baseball. Yeah. And hopefully playing in Cincinnati will, will help. They're going to be facing some tough pitching from the reds. Uh, but you know, hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully they wake up and the offense starts hitting. So uh, I've enjoyed recording these from my parents' house. Uh, it's not the house I grew up in, but it's close to where I grew up. And, this, uh, if you're watching on YouTube, I've been taking a drink of water from this yellow Tupperware cup. Uh, this is the cup I drank from all growing up. So uh, it's it's nostalgia right here. Um, so I think I'll have one more episode from here tomorrow night before I drive home on Wednesday. So uh, I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you all for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen every day. Now, maybe for your second listen, check out the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft. The first picks of the Ultimate NBA Mock Draft have been made. Search now for Ultimate NBA Mock Draft and get over 50 insiders, the Odyssey sports experts, the draft experts of Locked On NBA Big Board. Five-episode Ultimate NBA Mock Draft is underway. Make Ultimate NBA Mock Draft your second listen today. Uh, if you're not watching or listening to Locked on Dodgers every day, we would love if you had one or two, one or two days a month to your rotation. If you've got friends or family who like the Dodgers as much as you do, please tell them about the show and maybe they can check it out. You can follow us on Instagram and on Twitter at Locked on Dodgers. Vince is on Twitter at Vince Semperio. 
I am on Twitter at Snydog, and the DMs are open in all of those places. So you can reach out to us anytime you want, not just for mailbag episodes, but anytime. Uh, you can also reach us via email at LockedOnDodgers at gmail.com, or you can leave us a voicemail or shoot us a text message at 323-863-LOCK-5625. We are here every weekday morning, and we hope you'll be here with us. When you get in your car or sit on your couch, tell your smart device to play podcast Locked On Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a good one.